you have to go through to come to a mindset and a conclusion that the truth of God will not change. Facts don't change based upon how you feel. God is great. Can we lift this song as a family? Let's do it. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And we sing, great are you, Lord. It sounds like you know it. Sing it out. It's your breath in our love, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you, oh, yeah. Great are you, Lord. You give life. Come on, sing it. Come on, let them sing. It's your bed 
in this moment. We don't take your presence for granted. We know you have a decision, you have a choice to where you choose to manifest your presence. And God, we're so glad that you're here with us tonight. We don't want to do anything without you. We can't live without you. We can't breathe. It's your breath in our lungs. We can't even breathe without you. We couldn't have made up our mind to come here and worship and to praise and to learn about you. God, we so appreciate you. We ask that you would just come and continue to dwell among us. We pray that you would do something that only you could do. Well, I guess you've already done what only you can do. You've given us eyes to see and ears to hear, and you've given us a mind to come and worship you. Only you could do that. We acknowledge that it is you that put inside of us the will to do of your good pleasure. It was not of our own doing, God, but it was you that drew us. You had a desire to hear our voices tonight. God, we thank you for each and every person that's represented here. We so appreciate you, God. We thank you for those that are watching and streaming and those that will watch this broadcast after tonight. We pray to God that you would speak to them in a supernatural way. You would manifest yourself to them in a way that they will know that they have been and experienced the presence of God. Have your way tonight. Speak to us in a way that our lives will be changed. Don't let us leave here the same way that we came. God, you told us if we thirst and hunger after righteousness that we would be filled. So we've come here thirsting and hungering, not for personalities, not to see who's here, but we came because we, we want to know more about you. So would you just teach us, dear God? Would you help us to reflect your glory in this dark world? Let us to be light. Help us to walk circumspectly. Help us to redeem the time that you've already given to us. And God, if we said or done anything that has been unpleasing in your sight, Father, we ask that you forgive us even now in Jesus' name. Father, would you please create within us clean hearts? Would you renew a right spirit within us in the name of Jesus the Christ of Nazareth? Wash us with your word tonight. We thank you for the band. We thank you for media. We thank you for the people, all the people that are here, those that played a part in tonight. We never want to take them for granted. We thank you, oh God, for life, health, and for strength. We bless you even for our pastors for this privilege to be able to share your word on a Wednesday night. We take nothing for granted. Have your way even now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Before you take your seats, can you please greet someone and introduce yourself? Yes, right. So can we celebrate the two brave souls that have come up here? Come on, let's celebrate Chanel. <laughs> and we also have, come on, let's celebrate the maestro himself. <laughs> He's already apologizing, no apologizing. So I thought I'd open up the lesson this way. I wanted them to demonstrate what we're going to talk about tonight. Well, I'll let them show you, and we'll go from there. Okay, so what do you see? Hold on just a minute. What is going on? What do you see happening here? What are they throwing? Pickles? Who's throwing the pickles? Marcus is throwing the pickles. 
And what is her response? Wait a minute. Do you have any pickles? So, well, you were going, hold on. You said what? I was going to throw a pickle, but I decided not to. So why didn't you, if he threw a pickle at you, why didn't you throw one? Because the pickle, to me, seems like it's harder than the, mus the, the marshmallow. What y'all say? Yeah. So then why did you not throw back the marshmallow, I mean, the pickle, if that's what he was hitting you with? I was trying to be nice. <laughs> oh, she was trying to be nice. Come on, we're going to talk about this tonight. Come on, let's clap it. Come on, clap your hands. <laughs> so was Marcus walking it like he talked it? I know we have to get the pickles. I want us to turn, Mom, Aaron, if you could put up for me, you're saying, where are we going with this? I'm about to tell you. Aaron, if you would please put up me for John chapter 15. So you said you noticed that Marcus had the pickles. Chanel had the mushrooms. Marsh marshmallows. Chanel had the marshmallows. Chanel had pickles. You would think that if she had the pickle, she should have hit him back with the pickle. But she didn't hit him back with the pickle. She hit him back with And for a while, did y'all notice? She just stood there and let him Hmm. Let's go look at John chapter 15. John chapter 15, looking at verse number four. We're going to be looking with the amplified version. You could read along. Okay, this is a different translation. That's fine. So come on and read this. This is the amplified version. This is the classic version. Come on, let's read it. Dwell in me, and I will dwell in you. Uh huh. Uh huh. Just as no branch can bear fruit of itself without abiding in me, being like the divine, neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. Verse 5 I am the vine. You are the branches. Uh huh. Whoever lives in me and I in him bears much abundant fruit. Uh huh. However, Oh, the, you don't have the rest of the other scripture? Cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. Okay, so this is, Mrs. I want you to think about this, and you probably have this amplified version on your Bible. I want you to hear it again. Remain in me. Who's talking? Jesus. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, neither can you bear fruit producing evidence of your faith unless you remain in me. Who's the me? Jesus says, I am the vine. In case you got it twisted and you got lost somewhere along the translation, Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Look at your neighbor and say, hey, branch. Hey, branch. Uh-huh. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. Can, um, Damon, can you please bring that over here, please? Just right here. So the scripture is clear. He says, if we stay connected, look at your other neighbor and say, hi, branch. Hi, branch. So it says, if we stay connected to the vine, good fruit naturally come, what? Good fruit will naturally come out of you, will naturally come out of me. Because a branch that is, why? Because we are branches that are connected to the vine. 
So he says, or King James Version says, abide in me. And I wanted you to say, remain in me. Can we put that picture up, Aaron, please? Notice, the Bible is clear. He's telling us, remain in me and I will remain in you. These roses were a part of a bush. Were a part of a vine. Are you with me? The moment that these roses were cut from this vine, they started to what? They started to what? So you mean the ones that are looking good are? Are you sure that they're dying? How do you know that they're dying? Uh-oh, because they, y'all are helping me preach. Come on, what did you say? Because they're not, because look at all of these beautiful rose bushes. They're so gorgeous, OMG. But the moment that they were cut and became individual, they wanted to be independent. Can't nobody tell me what to do? I know what to do. I got this. I got the degrees. I sure have got all the titles. You know how many friends I have on Instagram? Yeah. Face, y'all, you checked out my followers on Facebook? No, you can't. No, no, no. I don't need to be a part of anything. I need to be separate. And the Bible says if you stay connected, Branch, if you would have just stayed connected, you would have been looking. Look at you. I wonder how many of us sitting here tonight or that are watching me on video are looking like this. No, 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 no. We can't see it with the natural eye. No, no. We can't see it with the natural eye. Not quite yet. Because some of us sitting in here, we're looking really good. We're looking like everything is coming up roses. We smell good. We're looking good. We're trying to hang around the ones that look the best so that we won't notice those that are a little bit drooping down here at the bottom. And so Jesus is saying, abide in me. He says, if you abide in me, I will. It's no and if buts about it. He said, I will remain in you. If we stay connected, somebody say abide. Abide. Abide means to live. Abide means to continue. Abide means to remain. So when we say abide, abide in Christ is to live in him and or remain in him. Live in him and remain in him. You were looking fantastic up there when you were connected to him. But somewhere along the line, somebody has convinced us to detach ourselves from the vine. So when we think about that term, that phrase, abiding is in Christ, abiding in Christ is, speaks to our level of intimacy. It speaks to having a close relationship with Jesus and not just a superficial acquaintance. In other words, you have been naked with Jesus and you're no longer ashamed. Oh, he's talking about, can you get intimate with me? Can you be with me? He said, abide. And so this picture, when we start to look at this text, when he says, remain in me and I'll remain in you, and just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in me, you can't, you can't, look, did you not know you can't reproduce? You cannot reproduce. If you would have stayed connected, you would have re reproduced. The only option that you have at this point is death. There are no other options. I can try to prolong your life. I added water. I'll cut your stems. I'll add sugar 
to the water. I'll add all these other things, but at the end of the day, Jesus. you're going to die because you got disconnected. And so Jesus is telling his disciples that drawing life from him is essential. He said, I love this when he's using about the picture of the branches united to a vine. And this picture is so rich when you look at this text because it really means Jesus is saying, I am the vine and you and I, believers, disciples. And there is a difference between believers and disciples. Which one are you? Have you just believed or have you gotten to the point that you've made up in your mind, I'm a disciple for Jesus. I didn't just believe him, in him, and accept him as my Lord and Savior. I've made a decision that I want him to disciple me. I want him to chastise me. I want him to correct me. I want him to love on me. Why? Because he's not a schizophrenic madman. And if God is chastising me, it's only because he wants me to get better. Yeah. The Christians, no, 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 no. Believers don't like to, no, no. If you say, are you blessed? They're only blessed and highly favored when they got the new job, when they got yeah. the new car, yeah. when God has given them everything they want. They are blessed and highly favored. But Lord Jesus, if it's a bad day, they got a toe ache, a headache, their back is aching, it ain't a good day. They ain't blessed and highly favored. Teach. Teach. My children are acting up, so you're not blessed now because your kid's acting up. My husband, my wife is tripping. Oh, so you're not. Do you know how many times I posted not one like? I don't have one like. Oh, oh, you need somebody to like you. Oh, I see. They don't know you, OK? Look at this beautiful. And Jesus is saying, listen, abide in me. And he's been dealing with me about this because he's allowing me to see how believers, and we're going to get to this, if God be my helper, he has deposited so much inside of me, I want to get it out. There is such a move, people of God. You've got to stay connected to the vine. I'm telling you something. If you don't stay connected, it looks like they are right. They look like a duck. They quack like a duck. They walk like a duck. And some of you think it's a duck. It's not a duck. We got some people out here that are walking and prophesying, and you think, do you know the devil knows your name? Do you know that the devil sits by you? He has some and an imp assigned to you to listen to what you pray for because you don't want to pray in the spirit. So he has an imp sitting right beside you, listening to what you're praying. And you're like, how did they know that? The devil's like, yeah, keep on, because I set him up real good. Amen. We want to experience the supernatural. He said, Bob, how would they experience the supernatural if they don't believe I can fill them with my holy presence? Uh-oh. You want to experience a supernatural? The first step of supernatural is if you can't believe that he would allow you to speak in a language, how do you expect him to heal your body? You ain't going to believe that. You're going to be trying to figure how he going to do No, but after you've experienced a certain God in such a way, you, you can't make me doubt him. Because I know too much about him. So you're looking at these flowers. And this is what he's saying. I love it. I was sharing it with Bishop this morning. I said, oh, God just showed me. I sure hope them flowers are still at work. Because this is what I want you to notice. When they were a branch, they were, they were a branch, and they were connected to the vine, they were in water. Somebody say they were in water. They were in everlasting, ever going, bubbling up water. They were always getting water. But if you look at these, they got water, too. Hmm, so you're trying to tell me I can be in the water, but not the water get in me? Oh, oh, so it's possible for me to be in water and still die? You say, what are you talking about? It's possible for you to come to Bible study. It's possible for you to hang around and get on all the prayer line. You know what? I know I might hurt some people's feelings, and that's not my, my motive. But I got to tell you what the Lord 
Lord told me. He said, all these prayer lines, he said, I don't like them. I said, why? He said, because it's the only thing it's doing is teaching people not to pray. He said, they're going to get on a line and they're going to walk around the house and they're scratching their head and brushing their teeth. He said, and they'll say, oh, I prayed today. He said, tell them no, they didn't. No, somebody else prayed, but you didn't pray. I told you, y'all better pray. Yes, the prophetic is fully out today. Hallelujah. So hear me and hear me well. Nothing wrong with the prayer lines. But don't you get so caught up in the prayer line that you don't open up your prayer mouth. You, when's the last time you spent? Listen, we said when you're talking about being attached to the vine, attached to the vine is a moment of intimacy. God is not into spiritual orgies. Oh, so you think you're going to be on a line with a whole bunch of people? Uh oh, that went over your head. Uh huh, I'm going to let him give you a breath. Go ahead, inhale, exhale. Go ahead, inhale, yeah. Breathe deep. Yes, uh huh, let it out, let it out. Y'all got it? You back with me, okay. No, you want God to deposit something inside of you. God said, you're going to have to get intimate with me, baby. It's going to have to be a me and you kind of thing. Don't expect me to deposit something when you got everybody around. Because you can be in water and still be dying. How could I be on all them prayer lines, Jesus? You know the prophets that called out my name? They knew my name. They knew exactly what came in the mail that day. And only you're impressed. Because once that spirit recognizes that you recognize it, there's certain things it ain't even going to try with you. Because just like you see it, it sees you. Say, so don't even, I ain't going to call on that one. No, she, she been and looked at me and said, no, they, the Lord is saying, what do you hear? Nothing. I don't hear a thing. See, but some of y'all can't do that. Because you got detached. You haven't spent time with God. Not by yourself. You've been always in a crowd. No, 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 no. No, no, it's time for you to get alone with him. You and him. Because you can be in the water, and these flowers are in the water, but they are attached from the bush. They are detached from the tree. They are detached from the vine. And listen at this. They will never grow. What did I say? They're never going to grow. But they are going to die. They're going to die. And I thought they were going to die too quickly because I was like, Lord, baby, please go check them and make sure they back. We got some flowers because I hear God. And listen, they're going to look good for a season. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They're going to look good for a season. They're going to smell good for a season. And then they're going to die. Because the reality is, the moment that they detached from the vine, they made a decision. A decision was made. And for us, this is a decision we get to make. The moment we choose to detach from the vine is the moment that we decide we want to die. It's a choice we, we make. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. We all get to decide. I get to decide too. We all get to decide. And so we're not designated. We were not created. We were not designed to live separately from Jesus. Because apart from him, we are dead, even if we look like we are alive. I've never been with anyone. Uh, you can pull up the next script with John 4. I've never been in a room with someone who has died, but I've heard enough people tell me it would, they took their last breath and they said they looked like they were asleep. And they've told me that their bodies even remained warm, even though they were gone. Hmm. I wonder who you sit beside every Sunday. Yeah. 
or maybe it's us. Sitting in the water, sitting in the word, being washed by the water of the word, coming to Bible study, taking notes that we don't ever read them, but it still looks good. I'm glad y'all are here, at least writing them down. Praise Jesus. Ah, you can be in the water, but it's not enough for us to be in the water. We've got to make sure that the water is inside of us. Amen. Amen. Let's look at this scripture, John 4, 14. Come on, let's read this. But whoever... Uh huh. And so listen, so whoever drinks the water, Jesus is saying that I'm giving you, and we, read, we looked at this text already. He said, you're, gonna never, you're never gonna be thirsty again, but the water that I give him will become in him a spring. Yeah. Did y'all catch that? So Jesus is saying, the water that I'm gonna give you, this is not a spring, baby. He said, but the water I give you is gonna be like a spring. It's going to be like an ongoing system where it's constantly springing up inside of you. I was working on a visual, but I had to bring it next time because I couldn't get it all together. But I, it's right. a springing up inside of you and springing up inside of me. Come on, let's look at the next scripture, um, Aaron. We're going to look at Matthew 7, 15. Are you getting anything? Yeah. I want you to hear the word behind the word. Yeah. Did you catch me? Yeah. I don't want you to write down what I'm telling you. That's why I keep pausing, because I want you to write down the word that God is telling you, because all of us are probably receiving a different word from the word, because if you're sitting by the water, maybe my toes are in, right? But your toes not in, your fingers are in, right? Somebody just got their head in and their body's on the shore. You got to make sure that you're getting what you're being touched in the place that God wants to touch. Okay. I have a picture. Remember I showed you, dear? It's a picture of a sheep in the midst. It's a picture of a wolf in the midst of a bunch of sheep. But the wolf looks just like the sheep. And I saw it and I held on to it because I said, oh no, I know one day I'm gonna need to use this. So you see all around the wolf are sheep. The sheep don't even realize that a wolf is in their presence. You know why? Because they're distracted. Mm -hmm. See, TV, nothing wrong with it, but you gotta be careful because it's a, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You get mad about what somebody did or didn't do to you, if you really trust God and steps of good people, we told you it went across his desk. And before he said approve, he's the one who had the stamp of approve. You mad because something somebody did to you, but at the end of the day, they didn't do it to you. He's the one who stamped approved. But you get distracted. Somebody hurt your feelings, and you're all up in your feelings days, months, years later. It's nothing but a distraction. You, count, you found it, Marcus? Oh, I know you're working with me, brother. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I don't know if they'll be, if they bring it up, I'm going to jump right there. So he says, beware of the false prophets or teachers who come to you dressed as sheep, appearing gentle and innocent. That's how they look. That's how they act. Listen, but inwardly, they are ravenous wolves. Verse 16 says, I love this. Thank you, Jesus, for verse 16. You will fully recognize them by their fruits. Now this says fruits, but really it should say fruit. By their fruit, you will recognize them. That is by their contrived doctrine and self-focus. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Verse 17 says, even so, every healthy tree 
bears good fruit. Somebody say good fruit. Good fruit. But the unhealthy tree bears bad fruit. But this is the good news. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. So when you saw them throwing the pickles and the marshmallows, no matter what happened to Chanel, notice a good tree had pickles in her pot. But she never threw her pickle because a good tree would never pay evil for evil. Because they realized vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repent. So though she had the pickle, and though he hit her hard enough that she probably thought about throwing the pickle, a good tree might think to retaliate, but a good tree will never. Uh-oh. Not if they in the water and the water's in them. So you're like, how would I know? Well, if you wanted to throw the pickle back, I think you better draw back on up close to that. You better get closer to the branch now. Come on. Get let me to the vine. Get close to them again. Because somewhere along the line, all of us, we are born with a sinful nature. And if we don't stay connected to the vine, all of us will act cray cray. All of us, the most respected person, I don't know who you respect highly, but I promise you, even them will be cray cray. Because we are all shaped in sin and born in iniquity, and our flesh will act up. So he says, listen, he says a good tree can't even throw a pickle even if you threw a pickle. Not if, they in, not if the water is inside of them and they're in the water. Y'all see that? Thank you so much, Marcus. It's two more. It's two more. He got two more. What y'all say? This is the one I saw. Y'all see it? Hold on. Hold on. This is what. This is why I'm trying to tell y'all. You need to pay attention. You got to pay attention. It needs to look so much like the real thing that you fall for it. And, and if you're not close up to the vine, you. bear good fruit is going to be cut down and it's going to be thrown into the fire therefore by their fruit you will recognize them I told I shared something with my husband recently I said God show me something baby I said you know what there are so many people in our churches that are serving other gods Oh, yeah. See, the problem is there's a new name for these gods. Very prevalent, sp especially among the African American church. So we say, oh, I don't serve Buddha. No, his name ain't Buddha no more. That ain't the name Buddha. But we get in certain societies. Yes, I am walking there. I hear the Holy Ghost. I got to go where he tells me to go. And there's certain gods that you have pledged allegiance to. And God said, you can't have no other god. What? Who have you pledged your life to? No, no. You can't even spend that amount of time with me. See, we, right there, 
We're so much in the mix, we ain't even recognize that it's a wolf because it's not called what we thought it would be called. The devil knows how to make it look good, so we like, oh, we figure out all the nice ways why this is okay, but we don't go back to the Bible. He said, Jesus said, if it were possible, even my very elect would be fooled. Because if you don't stay close enough to Jesus, you're going to start making carnal decisions. You going to make him, I'm going to make him, all of God's children going to make him. So Jesus said, I better hurry back. Because there's a whole new movement moving on here. And people falling, being bamboozled and duped. And don't nobody want to say nothing. And I'm just sitting back like, how in the name of Jesus the Christ of Nazareth did that get by? How did you make your mouth say what God you would serve and it ain't the true and the living God? Oh, because you thought Harry Kurt Krishna and, you know, Buddha and Allah and Muhammad. You think the devil was going to keep calling them that? No, there's some new modern devils now. There's some new modern gods now. Oh, yeah. So I want you to go back and ask yourself, so who have I pledged myself to? What have I committed my obeyance to. Yeah. Who? What? I love the story my husband shares when he worked at Georgetown Law School and his boss wanted him to lie. And she was standing right there. She said, tell him I'm not here. See that? She said, tell him I'm not here. He said, I can't tell them you're not here. Because I'm looking at you and you, I think I see you. You're here. Let somebody else do your work. He didn't say that, but you know what? The devil always got somebody. Somebody said, get me. I'll do it. Yeah, that's about the only way it's going to get done. Because I'm not going to do it. But see, many of us, we want to fit in. Even though the Bible has clearly said that we are royal priesthood, we are a chosen nation, we are wonderfully and fearfully made. He is the God that has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light, and we should show forth the glory of our God. Uh oh, but I, 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 I want to, I, I need some people to hang around too. Oh, at the expense? Oh, okay, so you, oh, I see. So sometimes you may know that it's a wolf, but rather than be alone with you and Jesus, you said, shoot, I'd rather be around a wolf than be by myself. What'd you say, mother? It's a costly decision. And brothers and sisters, hear me and hear me well. We are living in a day and time you better make sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. You better make sure that on Christ the solid rock you stand, that all other ground is sinking sand. Oh, you better know. You better stop cackling and giggling after stuff that don't you know is wrong. I'm not talking about wrong in your eyes, although it may be, but I'm talking about it's wrong when you align it with Scripture. That's why I want to applaud you. Because I already know, I knew what God gave me to share tonight. And I was excited about it. He was bull, I was fasting and praying, and I knew, I said, oh Lord, you about to do something else, Jesus. And you know what, you pressed your way here, and if I were to ask the majority of you, if I would ask you how many of you had to press to get here, I guarantee you, the majority of you will say, me. Because the enemy would do every single thing that he could do so that you and me could be bamboozled, we could be run amok, we could keep going wrong, we could keep hanging around wolves, thinking, around, thinking we're hanging around sheep. Mm -mm. No. No, I'm pulling the covers off. You can do wrong if you want to, but it won't be because you didn't know no better. Mm -mm. Oh, after you leave here today, you'll be like, oh, mm, yep, yeah, mm, oh, ouch, ooh, ah. 
because I love you too much to let you stay where you are. The enemy will not come up while I'm here. I think this is how I imagine in my spirit. Like I will know something and I'm standing on the porch. I'm standing in my house with the screen door. Y'all with me? I'm in the house, but I'm on the screen and I'm watching everybody else on the yard. I got a gate so that they don't know outsiders come in my yard. But in my mind, you know what I see? Make me so mad. I see the enemy coming up in the yard, trying to take the children of God. Not on my watch. No, 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 not on my watch. Don't like me, don't follow me, don't come back no more. But oh, when I stand before Jesus, I need to hear him say, well done. Galatians 1.10, do I want to be a God pleaser or do I want to be a people pleaser? Do I choose God? I'ma choose him again and again. I'ma choose him again and again. I'ma choose him again and again. I told my husband, I said, baby, I said, I don't, I, you know, I hear a lot of people. He, he, he's so sweet. I said, baby, I hear so many people saying they are mad, they've been mad with God. I said, but you know what? I can honestly say, I ain't never been mad with God. He said, you've never been mad? I said, no. And I said, I don't want to feel like I'm being high mind or anything, but I said, I have never been mad at God. And he said, there's nothing wrong with you never being mad. I said, because I've never doubted God's motives. The Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. See, I might not like what he's doing. Oh, baby, but stick with him, stick with him. Stick with him to the end of the scene. Now, you know, I do like to fast forward to the end. You know, y'all know that. Y'all been watching, you know what I'm saying? You know, I would like, you know, I'm like, so what happened? You know, I even told him, you know what I told him? I said, you ain't even got to show me the end of the movie. Can you just show me the next scene? He ain't even show me the next scene, y'all. He did, no, not even that. But when you trust God, this is exactly what will happen. So we must hold fast. We must make sure as believers that we stick to the teachings of Christ and the words of scripture. Thank you so much. The human heart, the human heart, when you look at this scripture in Matthew 7, 15, the human heart longs for the new and the novel. But guess what? God's word is sufficient. Somebody shout, God's word is enough. God's word is enough. I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't matter how nice a person is. It doesn't matter how holy and prayerful and pious you think that they live. It doesn't matter how much they look like a sheep. Be careful. Yes. You better be careful while listening to the things they teach. The book of Acts tells us how that the, children, that, the, that the believers, the Christians, they would get happy. While Paul and Silas, oh, they was probably picking them up and putting them down too. Oh, but they weren't picking them up and putting them down so much that they weren't listening. And the Bible said after Paul got finished preaching, the notes that they took in Bible study, you know, the walking in the Word so they can walk it like they talked it, you know what I'm saying, that kind of Bible study. Yeah, they went home, and guess what they did? They searched the scriptures for themselves. They said, I need to know what I need to get rid of and cast out. I don't want that seed to grow in my spirit if it didn't come from God. Amen. That's what I want y'all to do with us. Don't take our word for granted. No, study. The only way the enemy can bamboozle us is if you don't study. I'm going to make mistakes. When I make mistakes, the Bible says two are better than one. If I'm teaching and I get off and you know you bring me back in, praise Jesus. But if you don't study and I don't study, we're the blind lead the blind. We all, listen, we all have moments where we forget. We say something that's not, it's okay. But if you've been studying, you can be like, oh, that's not, no, that's not scripture. You're like, no, that's not scripture. No, oh, that's not, oh, okay. Oh, it's not that serious. Because guess what? You keep living long enough, you're going to say something that you thought was Bible and it ain't Bible. We hear so much stuff. Unless you've got a photographic memory, we're all going to say something sometimes that doesn't align with the word of God. And this is what I'm praying. I put this in my notes. He said, be careful listening to the things that they teach because Jesus told us to examine them. How should we examine them? By their fruit. Say that. I need to examine them, examine them by, their by their fruit. And
And so my prayer, and this is what I want you to pray for. I'm going to challenge you to pray for this. Ask God to give you the spirit of discernment. Yes. Ask God to give you. There is a gift of discernment. I, but listen, but you can also pray for the spirit of discernment. Yes. Yes. We can ask God, God, show me. Yes. Pay attention. He gave you two ears and one mouth. Sometimes study to be quiet. Yes. Be quiet. Listen. And then when you get finished listening, you go in your quiet space with God. I call him my mentor. God is my mentor. Jesus, I, I showed up this morning at my meeting. I said, Jesus, here I am. I, I told you I was going to be a good mentee. I said, here I am. I got my notebook, and I sat down in his presence. And I said, I'm just here. I want to tell me what you want me to do, Jesus. I want to be a good mentor. I'm, I'm going to be a good mentee. I ain't always been a good mentee. I'm going to be a good mentee. I was too busy wanting all these other people to be my mentors and so on. I said, mm, I was crazy, Jesus. I was crazy. I said, Jesus, I was so crazy. I was crazy. How could I want human mentors when I could have had you? Jesus, I was off. You know, you, know, you know these human people you make. But I'm better now. I just sat down, and I had my notebook out. And everything he, I felt he was saying, I was writing it down. He's like, well, how do you know he said it? If he didn't, who cares? I still wrote it down, baby. Whatever popped in my head, if it wasn't crazy, I was like, mm, that must be, I was sitting with him. I figured if it was him. If it wasn't him, no problem. And one thing I love about him is his word does not retort into, return into him void or empty. It will accomplish where he sends it. Amen. And some of us, sometimes we need to just use the gift of sitting back and doing nothing. Amen. Turn your phone off. Amen. People would call me. I told my husband, I said, I'm so sorry. I put on my do not disturb. I didn't even know how many times he called me this morning. I put on do not disturb. So that means I didn't know who was calling. The phone wasn't ringing. Nothing. No, I'm in a meeting with Jesus. Amen. Ain't nobody going to supersede him because I need to stay close to him. Because there's some crazy stuff going on now. And I need to be able to hear very clearly, very clearly, very clearly. Jesus says, listen, I love Jesus. This is what, when you look in Isaiah, write this scripture down. Isaiah 11, 2 and 3. Isaiah 11, 2 and 3. This is what Jesus did. This is the scripture that says, it said, by, you were talking about godly discernment. The Bible says that he did not. Um, okay, thank you, Marcus. Y'all write that scripture down, Isaiah 11. Okay, this is what I love about this. The Bible says, by his spirit, we can function in the manner that Jesus did. Listen, he did not judge by what his eyes saw, nor make decisions by what his ears heard. Did y'all catch that? We are not going to make decisions based upon what our eyes see. We just saw that. And we're not going to make decisions based upon what our ears heard. Now listen, that means that if you and I want to make sure we're in the water, the word, we're in Jesus, right? And he's inside of us, that means we're going to have to spend some time with him. How are you going to know what he's saying? You're going to have to spend time with him by yourself. And you're going to ask him some questions and you're going to sit there and listen. Because some of us call ourselves praying. You pray, you can finish, amen, you up. Prayer is not a monologue. Prayer is a dialogue. So when you get finished praying, you're supposed to sit there like, he like, I, well, shoot. I, have you ever gone to a restaurant and you really was going to order dessert? Like, you was like, I'm about to order dessert. And they brought you your check. You're like, okay, she's about to give some more money, but no problem. Jesus like, nah, you done spent all that time with me, and I got some good stuff to tell you, but, oh, you don't want... Oh, you, you fool off of your own word. That's no problem. <laughs> he said, I was going to share some stuff with you. And that's what Jesus did. 2 Timothy 3.5 says, through discernment, we can identify who these people really are. And that's what we want. We want to pray that God would give us discernment. Somebody say discernment. Discernment. discernment the ability to rightly judge what is going on. It is closely related to wisdom as an expression of the spirit. We want to ask God, love, God, help me see beyond what I see. God, like the prophet, open my eyes that I might see. God, open my eyes, open my ears that I may hear. God, would you give me 20-20 vision in the realm of the spirit? God, give me clear, crisp transmission, God. I pray that anything that people say to me, I decree and declare that it shall be as foolishness in my ear. 
scriptures. You got to begin, God, thank you for the law of kindness being on my tongue. You got to use the scripture. You walk the word, baby. Walk it. Pull out the word and then you walk it. God, you said you would supply all of my need. According to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God, right now, you said, as a matter of fact, you said there would be no good thing that you would withhold from me if I walk up right before you. And look, deserving is a good thing, Jesus. I just thought I'd throw that out to you. Oh, this is how I talk to him. You said no good thing. It's a good thing for me to have a spirit of discernment so I can discern what's right and what's wrong. I need to know, is that a wolf? Is this a sheep? Now, it might be a wolf. No problem. You're like, no, I need you to stay there because you about to take the wolf down. And the only reason that the whole office ain't going down is because I got you there. You're like, okay, cool. Thank you. I know that was a wolf, though. Thank you. Oh, I see. So I got to come with a different set of weapons. Thank you, Jesus. I need to come a little dressed differently. Uh-huh. Now I got my assignment. See? That doesn't mean that you, just because there are a bunch of wolves around you, that Jesus doesn't want you there. But I promise you this, he ain't going to put you there if you can't handle it. Because he did not plan for you and I to acquiesce and become like them. He's saying, listen, I'm like a well of water springing up inside of you. Oh, thank you for putting that up. Did I give you that scripture? Oh, that's awesome. I, I didn't know that's it. For although they hold a form of godliness. Oh, okay, I'm going to say this. I'm going to give you this. Piety, but the scripture in King James said they have a form of godliness, but they're denying the power they're in. And that's what made me, okay, I'm going to tell you this. So some of you may have heard this. So years ago, I don't know how many years ago, we, we, before we downsized in our old house, and then I'm going to close, and I'll get back to it when we get back to it. Okay, so we were in our house, and... Um, I looked outside of the porch, and when I looked outside of the porch, I saw an animal that was dead, but the head was missing. And so I was looking at it, because I was like, God, I know you, you, you want me to know something. So I'm staring at it, and the, the body was intact. I said, yes, I, I see the body's intact. He said, the body's intact, but the head is missing. I said, yeah, I see, I see that the body intact, but the head is missing. He said, the body's intact, but the head is missing. I said, yeah, the body is intact, but the head is missing. He said, no, 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 the body is intact, but the head is missing. I said, oh, see, the body is intact, but our head is missing. We have started to do what's right in our own eyes. The body is intact, looking good. We know when to shout. We know when to sing. We know when to pray. We know when to do everything. He said, oh, y'all got it. But I ain't there. And eventually, I'm going to wait. You're going to look good for a season. But if you don't get me back where I belong, you're going to die. He never dealt with me and animals like this. I told my husband, I said, baby, come look. And I shared with him. And so, it was like a couple of days later, we going down the road. Again, what do I see? An animal on the road. And I was like, he's had me look. Okay, I don't usually look at these animals, Jesus. You, all right, but I'm looking. He said, I want you to look. And I said, isn't that something? I said, Jesus, it was a deer on the side of the road. But I said, everything is there. Like, but the middle was gone. I said, what? I said, it looks like I was looking. I said, so it's amazing, Jesus. It's a deer. And I said, everything is perfectly OK. The only thing they took out was the middle. I said, it, it must have been carrying something that needed to be destroyed. Because whatever ate it want to destroy the core. So what, are we, what are you saying? He said, you better tell my people. They better stay in the water and let the water stay in them. He said, because there's a seed inside of them that the enemy wants to take out and destroy. He wants to eat the seed that's in, it's at your core. If we don't, the word is at our core. And if we stop feasting on the word of God, what do we have? In him we live, move, and have our being. It is because of his mercies that we have 
not been consumed. And so when I see that animal laying there with everything intact, all the limbs intact, normally the head would be messed up. No, the head was fine, but the middle was gone. The devil comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. And the word that I've planted, that God has given me to plant inside of you tonight, the word that you already have inside of you from when you were younger, you allow that word to spring up inside of you, that's the very thing that the enemy wants to come and snatch it away from us. But the devil is a liar. My responsibility is to sound the alarm. should you wake up, you should be waking up everybody that's around you. A fire is coming. 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 That's what he's saying. You better wake him up. He said it won't be water, but a fire next time. A fire. A fire. Y'all awake. Y'all awake. Wake up. Not just you better be awake. You better wake everybody up so Oh, hear me and hear me well. God's not playing. He's not playing. But he loves us. I said, thank you, Jesus. Half the stuff I told you tonight wasn't even in my notes. But I so appreciate him because I told him whatever you want to say tonight. Because it's not about me. It's all about you. And so anything that was shared tonight that you caught, it was for you, baby. But it's not just for you. You gotta spread it. You gotta make sure other people know. You should be coming to Bible study every Wednesday by yourself. If we was at Ruth Chris and somebody was paying for it, you'd show up. You gotta begin to bring people. Say, come on, you got to get, you gotta get yourself together. Cause I don't know about you, but I know good word goes down in here. Yes, it whether it's Elder Kishé, whether it's us, whether it's through the worship segment, God meets us. I believe that you've heard God tonight. When somebody throws something hard at us, the Bible says you kill them with kindness. We're going to talk about the fruit. We're going to talk about the fruit. Just because they nasty don't mean you got to be nasty. Michelle Obama, she said when they go low, we could remember that, but we couldn't even remember the scripture. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. I got this. Keep your hands out the, keep your hands out the plate. Everybody standing. Father, we just thank you so much for this another day that you have made. We've been here with you tonight. You, you never failed us. You love us so much that you don't want us to die in foolishness and So you warn us and you chastise us and you, you love us. Then we do what we want to do. Then you warn us and you chastise us and you love us. And then we do what, you, what we want to do. You call us again and again. You never give up on us. I believe you're calling someone tonight 
calling someone to come closer to you, calling someone to abide in you as you abide in us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for loving us. God, we realize that we didn't choose you. You chose us. Thank you for choosing us. Someone is standing near me, God. I don't know if they know you or not, so I'm just going to grab the hand of the person that's standing beside me on either side. I know you're much too wise to just allow things to happen. Nothing just happens. The person that's standing beside me, you orchestrated it before the foundations of this world. Me pressing my way here tonight, it wasn't even me. I thought it was me, but I know I'm much too dumb to think it was me. It was you. Thank you, Jesus, for pushing me to this place at this time for your purpose. God, the person that's standing beside me, and it may even be me, we want to draw close to you. We want to experience you at another level. Thank you for not allowing us to be bamboozled. Thank you for sounding the alarm and waking us up tonight. We so appreciate how you want us to understand your word in such a way that now you're causing our instructors to bring it alive in a fresh new way so we can understand. You said the violent take it by force and God, we thank you for loving us and fighting for us with a violent spirit. If you're standing here under the sound of my voice, you know Jesus has spoken to you tonight. And you say, you know what? I need to get myself together. Because that girl was right. A fire is coming. Every day, Jesus comes for somebody. And God, I want to be ready. I've been waiting for this great event. But I fail to realize that every day you come for somebody. And tomorrow, tonight, it could very well be me. And I want to be ready. If that's you, I just want you to squeeze the hand of the person that's standing near you. And say, that's me. I need to get myself together. You don't need to get it together without him because, again, you have to abide in him and he has to abide in you. So you can't get it together by yourself. You need Jesus. You said, yeah, that's right, I need him. Go ahead and squeeze that hand again if you didn't already do so. Say, yes, I, I knew him before and I just messed up. I got distracted. But I want to come in alignment with Jesus tonight. I want to realign my life tonight. If that's you, just squeeze that person's hand beside you and say, I'm ready to recommit myself to Jesus. you just lift your hand you don't even have to come up to the front just lift your hand if you said that's me I need to give my life to the Lord I see you I see your hand you can put your hand up and put it back down you're like I really need to I just need to get myself together I need to come back to Jesus I need to stop playing around I stumbled in this Bible study 
didn't know God was going to meet me like that. But God, thank you. Thank you for speaking my language. And you said, I want to get my life. Come on, raise your hand and put it back down. If you said, that's me, I'm ready to rededicate. I'm really ready to commit myself. I see your hand. I see your hand. I'm going to ask you to do one more thing as my husband stands here with me. And I'm going to ask Damon if you will stand here as well. This is going to be bold, but I believe the God inside of you is bold. You're going to have to fight because there's a wolf amount around you. But I have to tell you something, there's a whole lot of sheep around you too. And if you raise your hand, I want you to come. Don't even think about it. Come on, one. I'm going to count to ten, and you need to be up here, two. Come on up here. If you raise your hand, come on, three. That's right. Y'all should be rejoicing. The angels are rejoicing. Four. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you.
dismissed. If you would see Brother Ralph in the back, he has the offering back bucket. What a powerful word on tonight. Listen, if you want to hear it again, you can go to Facebook. You can go to the YouTube channel. You can hear it again. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening.